first of all, I wish to express my thanks to Carlos Levy. He gave us a rare insight on the limits of stoic cosmopolitanism. And by the way, uh, yes. So thanks to Carlos, uh, who gave us a deep scanning of stoicism as a natural philosophy and its burden. My intervention aims to structure the debate according to question, two questions. First, underline the paradox so clearly documented by Carlos. Uh, the paradox introduces a rare contradiction in a declared universalism, something like a crack in the doctrine induced from a political objections. It is all the more surprising that more often than not, stoicism has been the source of a political resistance, as you know uh, from the Piso conjuration against Nero. More generally told, Stoics were opposed to any kind of tyrannical deviation of the Roman Imperium as testified in Seneca's treatise De Clemencia. Uh, so I am all the more surprised that uh, the uh, first uh, of the uh, accusation was uh, superstition and uh, missing to pay homage to the rights, uh, imperial rights. No. My second question will concern a more detailed approach of that specific reproach superstition, which was addressed to Jews by Stoicism, uh, which uh, did not cease. I shall suggest the core has been, the core of the quarrel has been a different conception of what are the modalities of obligation, what you must do. Hmm? Either according to the Stoic doctrine or according to the Judaic prescriptions. We may oppose the notion of Stoic adhesion to cosmos and to evergetism, to which I come in a moment, as a political expression compared, opposed, to the biblical modalities and obligations as far as they might uh, uh, have been uh, at the core of the paradox. Uh, under Carlos' control, I propose to articulate the moments of growing conflict he pointed to, starting from uh, Cicero's semi-institutional and legal determination of the governing rules as a landmark. Cicero being a moment when the physical doctrine of the Stoicism well, is embedded inside Roman law. Hmm? Let us say uh, Stoicism as a form became at that time a form of governance and a juridical determination hmm? uh, in, in embedded now into Roman practice. And Cicero evidently uh, used his overwhelming quality as an orator. It was, in a way, a cultural transfer of the kind, which uh, Marcel Mauss noted with the transfer in Rome of the uh, stoic consciousness, Sundaya Grisis, onto a Roman practice, use imaginum, as a possible origin to the concept of person. But this time, uh, there was an obstacle. So there has been, uh, uh, if we take Cicero and the text which uh, have been uh, argued mm, as uh, a line of, de of departure, there has been a before in Alexandrian time, and there has been an after in late Roman Empire. I now uh, uh, focus on the before. I mean, before the occasion of a conflict, I briefly recall 
uh, evoke the Jewish Alexandrian community as it was attested by a pseudo longus treatise on the sublime. Here, two juxtaposed quotations are given as a striking illustration of sublime, and they testify of a shared stoic culture. You know, the first one to, it was, God said, let there be light, and there was light. That was the first example of sublime for Pseudolonger. And immediately après, you have a second quotation, uh, uh, which is uh, the evocation of a moment in uh, 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 the uh, um, Arabian tragedy, Orest, uh, the vision of the Furies, which was a remake by uh, a repeat of uh, a famous uh, moment in the Aeneid uh, of Eschil. So, simultaneously, uh, uh, that uh, 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 Alexandrian uh, intellectual uh, society where uh, Stoic and Jewish were attuned, mm, that society uh, cherished both a biblical quotation, let it be with a loose misunderstanding, mm, and a, 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 a passage taken out of the tragic. Mm. We know that the substant translation has long been, and is yet again, a matter of contest. My point is elsewhere. It is the mere and decisive fact that it existed. It had been commissioned in the context of a rich enterprise of collection and translation uh, of the most important text ever written, hmm, a project which was so typical of the Alexandrian library of its ambitions and its devouring, never satisfied appetite. Stoic cosmo politism, uh, uh, um, or if you wish, uh, Aristotelian collection, mm, would have remained imperfect if not confirmed by a consensus of the most diverse classical texts, among them uh, the Pentateuch. Mm. It is only fair to recall that if it was later echoed uh, by uh, Philostratus uh, uh, Apollonius of uh, uh, of Tyne, Apollonius de Tian, patron later by a Roman empress. For more detail, I have no time to, to rest. I mentioned Luciano Confora, a book on the library of Alexandria and uh, all uh, which is now known on the Alexandrian lit literature. Uh, we, inside the second sophistic which was just um, uh, uh, a consequence of uh, uh, stoic logic. I leave that point. So, Alexandria did assume as a corollary of its power the reference to a natural cosmological order which was confirmed by a growing collection of learned books, yet learned or in the making, covering all the aspects of the human knowledge with a tacit conviction that they all might be received as direct or figurative declaration of a cosmological order. You know that uh, the stoic formula was exegeting eista physica. Mm -hmm. Back to uh, nature. It was also as a conviction shared by the successors of Alexander I, those Ptolemaeus et Verget. For a moment, a part of the learned Jewish society was perfectly integrated in Alexandria. We know how long it lasted, it is, it last remained in the 20th century. As to the association of the Roman history with the stoic idea of cosmopolitanism, the preserved books of polite 
his story as a decisive compromise between the cosmic organization and the recent history of Roma, uh, who took power on the uh, whole Mediterranean Sea, hmm, uh, uh, is uh, another proof of that uh, 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 familiarity of the idea of uh, uh, cosmic organization, uh, political organization, uh, historical organization and religious organization. And they were so glad to find with the first uh, verse of the Bible uh, something which was conforming, uh, confirming um, uh, a cosmological order. No. Uh, along those, um, I, I also mentioned because uh, time is short, uh, uh, we, 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 we know uh, that uh, uh, it is also the line of behavior which Seneca indicates as a last recourse to Nero in his treatise De Clementia, um, uh, 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 when uh, Seneca knows very well that uh, Nero is perverse. Nevertheless, last essay, hmm, he projects uh, Nero in a, a cosmological uh, organization and he, look, look, Nero, you are the one who is reversing all the uh, resources and uh, richness of the world to uh, the uh, Roman uh, pop population. But maybe we come back on those aspects in the discussion. Now we may consider anew the matter of the, debate, of the debate between Stoic and Jews. I suggest to point a discontent on the type of obligation to which a citizen was submitted. First, a word on the accusation of superstition, strangely enough, strangely enough, uh, because on the contrary, uh, it was Jewish people or later on Christian people who accused Mm, in, uh, uh, Roman citizen of uh, superstition. Nevertheless, mm, we know very well that uh, kind of uh, uh, objection. From the naturalist point of view of those last Stoics mm, converted uh, to an ideal evergetism following the imperial cult, uh, it was uh, not a concession to tyranny, but just a way to honor the natural order, a cosmology out of contest, because a good emperor was always possible, even if it never uh, came, hmm, and uh, offering a unique political solutions, maybe as had been or uh, was supposed to be Marc Aurel, a fascinating case indeed. With, uh, his own practice of writing and spiritual exercise, the use of a kairain to his professor, he leans his way to thank and pay homage for what he received from them and his desire to pay his debts. He was the excellent example of a stoic, a philosopher, an emperor, and a mere citizen. Uh, on the opposite, and uh, I wish to, to, to be short, I shall come back of Nero uh, Domus Aurea and his position uh, inside uh, the, the cosmos and the, uh, uh, you know, as uh, Sueton uh, recalls, uh, he had, uh, uh, a dining room, cella, hein, which was turning vice mundi, hein, the way the world is turning. So it was artifacts hein, uh, at the center of uh, the, 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 the mood. On the opposite, and to be short, the way Jewish people conceive of the divine commands appear to be very different. I just point to the kind of obligation 
transmitted by Moïse, as we know, the tables of law, confirmed by the prophets, and the obligation structuring the Jewish way of life and a way to remember. Uh, it is not enough to say that they are of an ethical kind and origin. They also affect a specific notion of time and a specific notion of concatenations of the events. Um, <clears throat> not as a physical determination to which each human contribute as the Stoics require. They keep in what is called the biblical future, I wish to be short, hmm, a prophetic note as um, the real core of the obligation. You will not kill, which uh, has been usually translated as don't kill, as if uh, a Latin or a Greek uh, uh, propositional form was good enough, huh, was uh, corrected, as uh, you know, uh, by uh, the Jansenist grammarians who told, no, no, you don't must translate don't kill. You must translate, you will not kill. And so there is something messianic or prophetic in the uh, command, in the obligation. Maybe I, someone, will not kill. Not now, I'm liberal, nevertheless. Hmm? That was open. And that was that kind of obligation hmm, of submission to the law was absolutely different from the kind of natural law and the uh, mind setting, which uh, has been so evidently uh, honored by uh, the comment uh, of Carlos, rationality, which means, uh, and uh, also the fact that it is not important if they don't speak very well. Most important is the endiatetos logos. And that and the Atetos Logos. For a Stoic was organized as A, if so, if so, if so. There was a concatenation of physical events. As far as I know, and following the problem of translation of the, uh, of the uh, 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 biblical future, huh? no, that is not the rule. It is maybe. There will be a prophet, there will be a messiah. We don't know. It is an open future. To the contrary, uh, according to the Stoics, I believe my papers, according to the Stoics, uh, uh, each moment, even if the moment which comes is not determined, it will be determined. Because the fate mm, will never miss if so, if so, if so. It is one of the reasons why I violently oppose to uh, an atomic translation of the, uh, into propositional calculus of uh, uh, stoic logic. To the contrary, it is a deep, deep concatenation. Huh? Uh, uh, just a remark. I take a famous formula uh, uh, by Seneca, fata nolentem trente, volentem du compte. The, the fate. Huh? will draw as a, a slave the one which refuses, but he will lead as an emperor, as a dux, the one who is consenting. And so you have the concatenation and the core of the political obedience uh, to the law of the Stoics. And to the contrary, uh, uh, it is absolutely unpalatable if you re, uh, leave aside that kind of propositional translation with modalities, physical modalities, possible, uh, uh, necessary, present, factual, and so on, and shift to other modalities which may be uh, of, of hope. Uh, I have no exact world. I am not an Hebraic uh, 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 expert. Huh? But nevertheless, I have read with great care both 
the remarks of the Jansenists who knew very well, very well uh, Hebrew grammar and the way they translated the Bible mm, mm, and uh, uh, also the echo in French language of that liberation of the expression of future uh, in literature as it was noted by Stendhal and others. Mm. I mean, it was an open future and I am only engaged with the prophetic tune of or the messianic possibility of that future and not by any kind of law of nature. Mm -hmm. I guess that it was a long, long misunderstanding uh, which had so terrible consequences. Yes, uh, merci, merci beaucoup. Je ne sais quand même pas où vous parlez en anglais. Non, tout de même pas. Merci infiniment. Et euh, pour toutes ces choses vraiment importantes, et en particulier pour votre réflexion sur le futur, qui me paraît vraiment essentiel. Je n'ai pas pu lire tout ce que euh, j'avais préparé, mais euh, je... J'avais noté, j'avais noté, uh, well, perhaps in English, I have uh, um, noticed that uh, in uh, the De Republica, uh, Cicero says that uh, the lex uh, naturae continebit, continebit, yes. continebit all the nations. And this uh, uh, future is a uh, uh, very important element since uh, uh, it is not the same future that we can uh, find in biblical passage. The continent is uh, the future of a, a determined causality which cannot fail. Yes, yes, exactly. It is the fact, Aristos, but it will be determined. Exactly. And the uh, biblical uh, future. Mm -hmm. Exactly. On the way. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, just a word, uh, there is a terrible passage in Luther, which has been noted by, uh, uh, by uh, uh, Michelet. Luther, which who was working hard on the translation of the Bible, told, but... They will never speak German, those prophets. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I, I forget uh, what came after, but the problem was on what is a prophetic mood? Mm? Mm -hmm. exactly. And uh, Greek grammar, uh, neither Roman grammar could uh, accept it. Questions? <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, in Diogenes of Enoanda, who in the second century AD constructed a wall in which he inscribed Epicurean philosophy, in one fragment says, there will come a time when there will be no slaves and no free, when there will be no separate between barbarian and us, and that his message is for everyone. And there's some discussion about how to interpret this, whether he means it as a prophecy or only as something desirable, but that may never occur. But at least there is some similarity here on the Epicurean side, even recalling in vague ways the language of Paul. Yes, but uh, you have also a similarity between uh, Diogenes' uh, uh, wall and uh, uh, Stoics in the way that uh, in a new fragment it is said that the Jews and Egyptians are really disgusting people.
sacrifice of Isaac could not be understood. Huh? Yeah. If it is finished, it is finished. Huh? He could yeah, not exactly. understand that it, it came again and again. Huh? Yes. 